everyone to the rest podcast where our goal is to help each and every one of you displace confusion chaos and dis-ease in order to heal and find significance in life i am your host natalie williams and i am here with the author of the reconstitution method for healing and rest virginia dixon hi natalie hi virginia i'm excited to continue this conversation as am i After our conversation last month, Catherine Dang, the founder of the Philomath Foundation, decided to rejoin us to elaborate on her previously mentioned observations of manhood, masculinity, and fatherhood. Welcome back, Catherine. Well, I'm glad to be back. Thank you. It occurred to me that after almost 40 years of marriage, you begin to see everything differently. And so much context comes from that primary sphere of influence, that relationship. Catherine, I'm looking forward to discussing this with you because when I look back, and we've had this conversation before, but I think that my husband, (laughs) and you taught me that, but my husband really was the one that really held our marriage together. He literally laid his life down for us. And perhaps it wasn't in the most constructive ways. It tends to be working and making a lot of sacrifices, Mm -hmm. but no one ever questioned his commitment to us and his love for us. And in the process of that, he grew up and I didn't realize how much it was preparing me for what would come during the second 20 years of our marriage, which was I needed to really begin to understand beyond what I did, what it meant to be the heart of the home and to exercise my power, my resources, and my capacity to process and endure things that were beyond my reach the first 20 years of our marriage. So I think I have a respect for that role of a husband being steady. Yes, Mm -hmm. he's steady, and he really held a lot of things together. And I was, truth be told, a little Pollyanna, (laughs) wild Pollyanna. I wanted to change the world, and uh, Mm -hmm. Anne of Green Gables. I'm going to write all these things. And and I remember watching Ray watch me and take so much pleasure and watching me become who he knew God made me to be. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't fully understand how it was his manhood which we're going to be talking yes. about that, his manhood and his understanding of masculinity. And and I think it was intuitive for him too, right? Yes. And fatherhood mm-hmm. that, by the way, he never had and he had to learn. And what that all meant in helping me even become the woman that I needed to be. And those early years really prepared us for all the ups and downs and the storms that came during the second half of our marriage. And I didn't recognize that till recently. Did that make sense? Well, 40 is an important year for everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, typically it's known as the end of all trials. Well, you've been there to watch them all (laughs) for 20 years of it. So, And, you know, the first 20 years of our life, I always kind of warn those that just turned 20 going toward 30 those are the most trying times of adulthood because you're not independent and you are independent you don't know what you believe fully but you're being te- you're going to grow into yourself find your, your own purpose not what you think before not your dreams but what's real to you and good for you and you learn to not go with the crowd, or if you do, you never really reach your full self. But that's another story. Yeah, and Ray Let was almost go- 30. You're right. Yeah, and that and makes a difference. He was 22. 30 yeah. is a good age for men. But let's go back to your Pollyanna and your <laughs> self. You watched it. You watched some oh, of I, it. I, and, yeah. and you know what? Your husband gave you liberty to grow. And I saw... Law and liberty reconciled. He had no problem. He was so stable. And that's the idea I see historically over the time of history, that law is not an enemy of liberty, and liberty is not an enemy of law. Otherwise, you have anarchy or tyranny. But there is a law protects liberty, 
and he was your protector. He was your wall of protection, not offense. So you think about that. I remember having a luncheon with some single women who were interested. There was a mixed bag. It was all levels of, you know, understanding. But we went to a nice restaurant in San Francisco overlooking the ocean. It was wonderful. We were. It was an elegant uh, luncheon. And I said, look over there out in the sea. And the wind and the waves were really swirling and strong. And you could see the white caps of the waves hitting upon this rock that was fixed in the ocean, rising out of the water. And I said, you see that rock? It's not going anywhere. It's just set in its ways. And it's been there for a while. It's rooted in that sand, in that ground, and it's not going anywhere. You see those waves keep rushing upon it and hitting it and one wave after another. I said, that's you and me. Mm. It's that balance in nature. I always say that you need the firm ground, but you need the waves hitting against it and and also the fluidity mm-hmm. of the female, in a sense, elasticity. But over time, that rock, the rough edges of that rock is going to be smoothened out by the waves hitting it over time. And that's sort of the proper balance and relationship between feminine and masculine. Do you see? They help each other. He's a barrier in some ways, but he is also being softened and rounded out in another way. That's home. That's what we appreciate in each other. That's the friendship in nature, and that's the friendship socially I think we want to see happen Mm -hmm. in our own circles so that was right your husband delighted in the fluidity and the the movement and activity that wasn't in his being and yet he rejoiced in your liberty and he gave you that because he was stable in himself and he kept the home together with his strength leadership yeah It's so true. What would you say to the women who are listening who say, I'm the rock and my husband's the fluidity? Can you apply that same principle? Because I don't want them to to confuse principles with temperaments and personality. Right. Absolutely. Again, we spoke earlier about the strength of women to, again, be strong in a way that men are not strong. And so sometimes we mistaken men to be like women we want them to be like us that in that way too sometimes we don't want them to be sometimes it feels yeah. like i have to step into his role because he's not yeah I've but it doesn't too. change the analogy of the rock and the water so i want you to build a bridge well of course that's that's nature okay that's set but in again life in our humanity there's going to be again a problem with this more complex than that. It has to do with, again, one's history, one's background. But because there's different kinds of leadership, and it's not all the same, it's not uniform. But the steadiness of a man, the faithfulness of a man, the presence of a man. My, my father didn't talk a lot, but when his presence spoke, he was always there. You know, the idea of a man is he stays. stays. That's right. That's the rock. It's the staying Stay. power. Staying power. Loyalty. Uh, just it's commitment. Present. I think it's faithfulness. It's resolve. And it's congruent with what we reference all the time, mm-hmm. which is these laws of nature, these things that are self-evident. He's got a physiological, you biological have, strength. Well, you have to recognize the leadership that is his it absolutely is his that's right when i speak in terms of mother and father and what how they make decisions I and say, even men and women right are you speaking about men and women yeah or, men and women okay. all together even as a single woman how i approach men is different than i approach my women friends or associates it's because i respect what they are as men and i'm not going to approach them without respect mm-hmm. And even when they reach an age of, in their teens, they're young men to me. And I say to parents, you must respect your children, especially your sons, when they reach their young men. 
And so you, again, there's a, a proper way of approaching your sons, and you don't command so much as, what do you think about this? I'm always approaching my male friends as if I want to know your perspective, because I don't see all things this right, you know, rightly. So it, to balance my thoughts, I want a masculine idea that is concerning my issue. Mm-hmm. But when I ask them, I give them authority, the right kind of authority that I don't have. You recognize you that, and you recognize their authority, their yeah. by design. Mm-hmm. Or I don't disrespect them. Let's put it this way: so that in the home, the man has the final say. One, and the woman has to know that before marriage, that that spouse, that he has the final word, but he will listen, mm-hmm. but he has to factor that in. But you say you, you give him the last word. It's really interesting you say that because in the early years of our marriage, I think I had an intuitive and working understanding of that. And somehow and not understanding my own role as a wife and, Mm -hmm. you know, and just my own role in the marriage, I think I just became careless about that and a little sloppy in how I interacted with my husband in the marriage. And I think it wore him down a little bit, if I was going to be really honest, because I didn't know the power I had. I didn't understand the relationship between meekness and weakness and all those things. And remember, I was raised by a man. So I didn't even know how to support my husband in his role, not as a man or in his role as a husband in the marriage, because I was just dreaming and planning and going. And he gave me the liberty to do that. So I think we both needed to extend each other a little grace but those things tip and shift. We can hurt them and wound them deeply mm-hmm. with our words and not know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Talk about that for a minute. Well, interesting. We all learn that you may say one thing but and mean one thing, and they hear it and, and interpret it in another way. Right. And the reason I want to bring this up, and I don't want this just to be a loose point, is because I loved the analogy of the rock and the waves, the fluidity of a woman, and the solidness that really by nature and by design is their constitution. Mm -hmm. Yes, But we don't understand that. That's right. So I think conventional wisdom... It's literal. It's it's more linear. Right. But conventional wisdom is, that's not true. So there's a lot of these, everything goes now. But there's this fundamental truth Mm -hmm. about that being the constitution of a man. And I think what happens is when they're not, and you touched on this briefly, but I want to go back and ask you about this. When they don't look like a rock, they look like the water, and women think they're the rock. There's a broken heart and a shattered soul, and there's some unresolved conflict there that we as women have the opportunity to perhaps help unwrap. Yes. Because, you know, and I wanted you to talk about that for a minute. You know, we talk about cuts and bruises on the outside, Mm -hmm. but there are cuts and bruises and and scars on the inside of a person. Mm -hmm. And if you understand how sensitive and fragile the male is in that regard, Mm -hmm. they will shut down and they won't speak. And if we add to the pain by more bruises and cuts on the inside with words or with even comments that touch a nerve... You understand, we have to, and you have to know this about each other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't take time to learn what is on the inside rather than only things Mm -hmm. on the outside. And I want to reinforce this point. We're talking about principles, laws of nature, things that are Mm self-evident and speak to our natural experience, natural Mm -hmm. affections. We're not talking about individual experiences. We know, and I, I see this Every single day, and I've seen it for 20-some years, and so have you, Catherine, that no matter how volatile a relationship is, when I get these couples behind closed doors, a man just wants respect and a woman just wants love. And it comes to that analogy of love must be very fluid and flexible, and it's that divine expression of God manifested in how a woman is Mm -hmm. and her anatomy bears witness of that 
and the solidness, the constitution of a man, even though appearances can be deceptive, but a man wants to be a rock, wants to be solid. He wants to provide, he wants to nurture because those things feed his hunger and his need for respect. So understanding how to fuel and not destroy okay. those things. Perhaps you can okay. help me well, with that. I can use the three A's. Okay? Good. Because he's, he is basically physical, and that's his sense of self. I watch little boys who are shorter than the girls, and they just don't feel like they're anything until they start growing. And I say 17 is when they come out of their coma. Because all of a sudden they begin shooting up, not physically, but intellectually and even spiritually that's important to them their physicality and so we have to appreciate and admire their strength the muscles they're developing their handsome being the haircut anything because it's true what is true don't make it phony but there are at times when they appear their manhood is appearing and when you see it in your spouse you just appreciate it and admire it, and you affirm your affection. And that pride in him as a man has to be built up. You know, men are built up, you're not put down. And any hint of a criticism or a fault or a discontent in you makes them feel a failure yeah. and small. So appearance, when you say men are built up, so are women. People are built up. So what's the distinction there? Well, they're built up on different things, on a different matter. What they can do well is important to a man, not so much. But it's not vanity. It's what the man does well that she can't do. That's how he provides us, how he protects us. Or whatever. What oh, yes. Does, yeah. Yes. Not just more provision, but just... It's those small things that people never notice. He's behind the scenes sometimes. He's not the forward, mm -hmm. but he's usually with a strong, silent type people talk about. And the silent one usually gets overpassed because he's not, you know, he's not hurt. But even outgoing, boisterous men, they, the same principle applies. So it's Absolutely. not so much about yeah. being ex No, yeah. No, I, yeah, so I, I wanted you to clarify I, that. I, I don't point. want that to be you know, right. taken too seriously but they are basically inside that sometimes they're boisterous because they're compensating for something but that's another matter as well yeah that's a tough one but, but so. what i'm saying is that the idea what we women admire in your particular friend or man or husband is what people sometimes don't notice mm -hmm. are it's taken for granted yeah. I mean, I have something that I can comment on that as well. Mm -hmm. So women a lot, we, you know, we want to be complimented about how we look and, you know, when, whenever we get our hair done, you know, does he notice, does he see these things? Men wonder the same things too. You know, they, they wonder, do we notice that they've been working out more? Do we yes. notice that they got the haircut? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so they, they need to hear the same words of affirmation as, as women do. In a different way, you know, yeah, you don't in a different hair. way. Yeah. But their bodies are important to them, yeah. and they're, they're looking manly. By experience, I, then I just when I say, "Oh, you're growing taller," even to, and you know that that last months, they walk around like, oh, you know, what I'm saying their chin lifts higher, That's right. their chest comes out a little bit. Yeah. They, it makes them feel amazing. All of, yeah, all your boys. Doctor Kraft says that the greatest deception that creeped into our thinking, that we began, the greatest confusion perhaps that crept into our thinking is that we confused value with function in terms of the role of a man and that of a woman. When I think about value, I think about a man and function, the mom's a practical one that kind of keeps the home or things going. But that relationship between function and value becomes really important in roles and they're both necessary for Example, we were talking earlier about a little bit about submission. It's about coming under one mission. Well, we become, we come under one mission when we understand function and value of a team, of a partnership. Mm -hmm. And I think when I'm hearing you speak now, which do you think correlates to the role of a man, one of function or value? I, I really don't separate so much. I think they come together in a sense how they build up everyone. I mean, they 
they're builders, they're mm-hmm. fixers. Mm-hmm. They resolve problems simply. They take a shortcut. Yeah. Sometimes I take the wrong long route, and they have a that linear way of get, getting down to the basics. I mean, just get down to the point. They yeah. want you to get down to the point, and they know how to get to the point without circumventing a lot of other issues. So it's their mentality, their intelligence. That's a, There's an intelligence that goes with being a man. What is that? And that is the simplest way to do something. Mm-hmm. Okay. No frills. Sometimes, you know. Practicality. We need the frill. But when it comes to certain things in life, you need the point, get to the point, and get rid of the fat. Well, it's the same reason why men are the designated protectors because men, they hear something fall in the house in the middle of the night. They jump up and they are ready for a fight. Whereas women are like, Oh, let's go check it out. What is it? You know, did something break? Did something shatter? Yeah. Was it the plate? You know, we're, we're, we're all over the place. Whereas men are like, who is it? Who's in my house? Like he's ready for, I can identify things. We can't, that's all. They just have a different, Ear. Children totally. intuitively feel safe with dad Absolutely. Yes. and long for mom, look for mom for nurturing. Mm-hmm. And it's just intuitive. And when those things are not in alignment in a home, the fruit of that is very confusing. They work together, really. Mm-hmm. It's, that's the stability of the family is mom and dad being together. And giving each other the grace to begin to understand, I think... That's the appreciation what, part. Yeah, yeah. To understand that these roles, we have to step into a deeper understanding of these roles. And then we have to practice our understanding of these roles. And the fruit of all that changes in the process, which has kind of been the pilgrimage. I think if I look back on 40 years of marriage, it's really learning to step into and understand and it's like a dance. adjust a dance. <laughs> It is. Yeah. And he leads it. And he knows the steps. And he knows where he wants to take you. And keeping a marriage together is about, I think, not growing weary. You grow together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You grow together. If women can understand the sensitivity of a man's heart and their hunger for respect, I think we can be instrumental in honoring the men in our lives, I should say, and mm-hmm. our fathers and fathers, and we can begin to converse with them and address them differently. Absolutely. Vice versa as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I want to comment on that too, because you're, you're talking about how men hunger for respect. And that's not just a saying. It's been scientifically proven through a research study done by Shanti Felden. And she talks mm-hmm. about it in her book, For Women Only, where she asked thousands of men gave them options of what do you want most? Do you want love over respect or do you want respect over love? Would you prefer to be loved than respected? Right? So she, she gives them options over 80% of the men that she asked said that they would rather be respected than loved. And for women, it was the opposite. So it's not, it's not just a saying it's been scientifically proven. Yeah. There's something innate in them that they know they lead. They're responsible for, you know, the shoulders are brought to shoulder the responsibility and they take responsibility. They may not be responsible, but they know they are responsible and it's to help them be responsible, not take away their responsibility. They want to be men. They want to take, be able to take responsibility. Yeah, and and any any hint that they have disappointed us as women that they're not living up to what we expect, they they break. They they really get disheartened. And there's been a systematic erosion yeah. of what it is to be a man. I want you to address that again. If you can our approach to them, yeah, they may be have made a mistake and they can admit it, but it's how we approach them in mm-hmm. the mistake with yeah. them. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about specifically what's happened in the last 70 years or so. Well, Systematically, this em- eroded. The intent to emasculate and dis- denigrate any male, in a sense, uh, because they're the strength of the family. I mean, and if they walk away from it, or they are made to incapacitate it to it, then the whole 
nation falls apart. Well, we've seen what's happened in inner cities as a result of absentee mm-hmm. fathers and the consequence. The research on this is exhaustive. Yeah. The consequence it's, of authority. And when you think about them having authority mm-hmm. and you understand what has happened, right. if the, the firmness, figure of authority. No stability. You lose the stability. And if all the band. Have, the band. I think of the wagon wheel, the wooden wagon wheel, and there are three parts, basically, when you see it. There's the outer rim, there's the hub, and there's the spokes. Mm -hmm. And I see the hub being the heart of the home, the center, and his life actually revolves around her. Mm. The husband has wedded her, chosen her to be the keeper of his heart, and he's trusting her with his whole most sensitive self. And he is the outer rim of that wagon, and it holds... He and the children and the wife in the center, right, together. The children they have would be the spokes. So it's so obvious that if the rim breaks, Mm -hmm. the whole thing collapses. And that's what's happened. Promiscuity is destructive to the soul of a man in that way. Mm -hmm. That it's not without effect. It's not without consequence. And he breaks. And he breaks. And the whole thing falls apart. And I can't tell you how many men I've spoken to privately that had traumatic sexual experiences that really impacted them and affected them for many, 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 many years. That's been surprising. But it does weaken, as we weaken our understanding of masculinity. We're talking about principles that are true for everyone. Because is our understanding of manhood masculinity and fatherhood diminish change shift or become watered down it has devastating consequences on the state of the family it's a house of cards it's a house of cards that's absolutely right and i think it's something i don't want to miss in this discussion so restoring an understanding yeah. right of these they things. need to know men how the boys the young men need to know how important they are to the whole thing, the, the whole thing, it begins with the strength of a man. Young men are feeling very irrelevant in this. And that's intentional in some ways. It is intentional, and it's a darkness that is upon us, and we need to restore, I guess, this Father's Day. I wanted to have this conversation and begin to have this conversation so we can begin to restore dignity In the lives of our son, Mm -hmm. in the lives of our fathers, by the way, in the lives of our husbands. And I believe the most effective and efficient way to do it is to step into a place of rest. If you're a man and you're listening to this, Mm -hmm. hopefully you can be encouraged by the fact that we are having this conversation. Well, we are, and, we are realigning ourselves that's right. properly yeah. with each other. With ourselves and each other. Yeah. That's right. And we recognize it and we are aware. We are aware and we're learning how to make these and, adjustments. And right? there is a generation that is, wasn't aware. Yeah. You see. And totally. we're privileged to be at this time in history where technology and all the other researches have come together and resources Mm -hmm. research and resources that we have to Mm -hmm. i think we are seeing a significant shift take place yeah one of the beautiful things that i find is the vulnerability and the transparency and the integrity with which men are willing to discuss this very topic and their own brokenness and i think that's such a beautiful thing yeah because with that vulnerability comes an incredible opportunity and there's no more denial that's of right. the truth that's yes. right perfect words to close on there's no longer denial of the truth i love that me too and i want to close with our commitment and our resolve to restore these ideas of masculinity femininity of what it is to be a mother and what it is to be a father and by the way if you do not have children You are the child of a woman or of a man. And so there is context for a lot of these things in your personal life. 
And we all have men in our lives. That we all have men and women in our lives, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Thank you, Catherine. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Just a quick update. We do have a day of rest that is coming up in Raleigh, North Carolina. The event has been on the website for a bit, but you can still register. It's going to be on June 10th through the 11th. And all of the information is there when you go to register. We hope to see you there. For updates about rest and this podcast, please visit our Instagram or Facebook, The Place of Rest. If you'd like more information about Virginia or to support and join the cause of rest, please go to virginiadixon.com forward slash collaborate or call 949-289-5935. Thank you for listening to Rest with Virginia Dixon. We'll see you next week.